You're listening to a message presented at New Market Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in New Market, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at New Market Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. The title of this morning's message, you can probably figure it out by now, what is it? There's some great big words up there. In everything give thanks. That's, that's the title of this morning's message. The text that we're going to be looking at is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18. Not a real long text, but boy, it says a mouthful. There in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18, we read these words. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we're talking about Thanksgiving today. And you told us to be thankful in everything. And I admit to you, sometimes that's harder than all get out. God, help us to study this text today. Find ways that we can be strengthened and truly do what you've commanded us to do, which is to be thankful in everything. Use me as your vessel and bless us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the text tells us that it's God's will for us to be thankful. Now, if you look at the original language in the background there, you find out he doesn't just say be thankful. It's a command. He says, you go and be thankful. It's a command for us to be thankful. And it's a command from God to us that we can't afford to ignore. When God tells you to do something, you're supposed to... Obey, do it. Yeah, all of those things. When God tells you to do something, you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to obey it. He said, be thankful. You need to be thankful. When God tells us to do it, it becomes our responsibility to make it happen. It doesn't say, it doesn't say in some things, give thanks. If it did, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with it. Well, wouldn't you? It'd be a lot easier if you could just be thankful in some things, but it says that we're to be thankful in all things. Now what that means is, <laughs> this life full of all kinds of things that throws us curse from time to time, this life that we're living, we're expected to give thanks in everything that happens, good and bad. I'll tell you what, giving thanks in absolutely everything, well, that's profoundly challenging. It's just plain hard to do. There's some things in life that I don't like. If it was just me, my human side, there's some times that I just couldn't do it. As I watched my dad struggle with Alzheimer's, he got to the point he didn't know who I was. I couldn't have been thankful for that were it not for the Holy Spirit working in me. This last week, actually a week or two ago, my, my daughter's boyfriend broke up with her. And I've been listening to her tears and it hurt be thankful in all things? Be thankful in that? How are you supposed to do that? How are you supposed to be thankful in everything? It says it. It's a command. I'm supposed to do it. But the bottom line is, without God's help, I don't think I can make it happen. Anybody else feel that way? I, it's hard to be thankful for some of these things. If it weren't for God's help, I simply couldn't do it. The commands found inside the Bible, I'm telling you what, they're a lot different than man's, man's commands, aren't they? But God inside of me says, you know what? God has got something even better in store for you. That's the God side. 
God's thoughts are so far above our thoughts. It's like the, the heavens above the earth. His thoughts are so much higher than ours. So much more knowledgeable than ours. We've got to be willing to trust Him because our little pea brains can't see or figure out all the things that are God. Giving thanks when things are going bad. It's not a normal response. Not for any of us. You might act like it is, but it's not normal to give thanks when things are going crummy. Giving thanks to God is often one of the last things on our mind when our world's falling apart. I mean, whenever our world's falling apart, what we're trying not to do, we're struggling just to get this done, is we're trying to keep ourselves from blaming God. Aren't are we? If we're really honest about it, aren't we trying to keep ourselves from blaming Him? We feel like that since everything happening in our lives is permitted by God, and since God knows just how bad this is, since He knows exactly what I'm going through, we feel like He should have done something about it to stop it. Don't we? Our dad shouldn't have been killed in that car wreck. It shouldn't have happened. God, you could have stopped that. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you stop that? Our mom shouldn't have had that heart attack. He shouldn't have raped me. That never should have happened. I shouldn't be losing my sight. It shouldn't be happening. My husband, he shouldn't have abandoned me. This is just too much, Lord. It's too hard. My kid, he shouldn't be hooked on drugs. He shouldn't have to deal with that. God, you know how much I needed that job. I shouldn't have lost my job, God. Uh, aren't those the kind of things we think? Lord, I shouldn't have got cancer. I've been serving you all my life. Well, why did I get cancer? If God knows everything, and if God can do all things, we think sometimes, our manly side, that things should be better than they are. That we shouldn't have to deal with the things that we're dealing with. Friends, hard times, let me get this. This is a profound statement. Hard times stink. Don't they? Going through hard times, it just plain stinks. None of us enjoy facing hard times. But I do believe we can find help through God to face even the difficult times so that we can be thankful in all circumstances. First, if you've got your handouts there, this is the first point of the handout. The first thing that we need to remember if we're going to get through hard times is we need to remember that God is in control. And we've got to remember that. Sometimes, like we just talked about, that can make it difficult too. When things are spinning out of control, we often confuse the things that are going on as what God wanted to happen. Sometimes he's just letting people have free will. Somebody got drunk, they're driving down the road, 60 miles an hour, swerving all over, and the next thing you know, they hit your loved one head on. And your loved one dies. Can't make any sense of it. God, why didn't you stop it? But if he didn't let that man have free choice, he would have been nothing more than a robot. He gave us free choice, and because we have free choice, we also have consequences. It's a reality. You can't blame everything on God. It's really, really hard for us to let go of things when they do happen. But here's the thing. The only way we can find peace when we're facing the hard times is if we let it go and let God have control. It's the only way we can find peace. If not, it will drive us nuts. Why did I spend the last 10 years watching my dad go downhill day after day, week after week, month after? Why did, that, why did that happen? What is it that's going on in your life? You ever wonder, why God did that happen? If you wonder that all the time, you'll go nuts. You've got to get to the point that you say, God, I know you can see a bigger picture than I can see. I understand that you've got this. I am trusting you to be in control and to take care of this. 
Even when I have no idea what's going on, God, I know that you are there and that you will see me through this when you finally turn it over to God and you recognize the fact that he understands what you're going through. When you finally do that, you can finally find a measure of peace. He knows all that we're going through and he has a plan to bring us through it. Now here's the thing. He also knows what we can withstand. Get this, this is important. With his help. He knows what we can withstand with his help. Did you get that? He knows what we can withstand with his help. He knows what we can withstand with his help. He will never let the devil put more on us than we can bear with his help. But I tell you what. If you try to bear it alone, sometimes it's too much for you. you got to understand the context of it all. If you're trying to do it on your own, sometimes it's going to be too much for you to carry by yourself. It's too overwhelming. But with God, nothing is impossible. Remember, God's in control. We need to take a few moments each day to thank God for having our best interest at heart. We need to thank Him for having a plan to bless us even when we don't understand it. We need to thank God for loving us enough to walk through the fire with us. And sometimes that's what it feels like. You feel like your world's falling apart. You feel like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego inside the flames. Man, it's hot in here. And then you look over and you see God by your side. And you begin to understand He is the one that will get you through this. We need to thank God for being in control. Next thing. We need to offer forgiveness. I am a human being. And as a human being, I have come to understand it's really easy to hold a grudge. Anybody else have problems with that? Oh, just a couple of us. The rest of you either lying or I don't know what. <laughs> Grudges can create a really hard time for us. Especially when someone has hurt us really, really deeply. Let's face it. Forgiving people, it's not easy. It's a hard thing to do. But it's a great way to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. And here's why. Every time we struggle to forgive someone else, we should remind ourselves just how often we need to ask God for forgiveness. Ooh, does that not change the perspective? How many of you just sin once a year? Yeah, right. How about just once a week? Have you got it down to once a day? I think if we were honest with ourselves... There's probably not an hour of the day goes by that we don't think something we wish we hadn't have thought, say something we wish we hadn't have said, or do something we wish we hadn't have did. Because we're all sinners. And we're all in need of God's grace. We should remind ourselves just how often we need to seek God's forgiveness. And then when we see those who have hurt us seeking forgiveness, when we see them out there, even if they're not seeking forgiveness, if we see them out there and our hearts are all aflame inside because of the anger that's there, we should come to realize that since God has forgiven me for so much, I ought to be willing to forgive them. Reflecting on what God has done for us makes it just a little bit easier to forgive others for what they have done to us. When we realize the importance of forgiveness in our lives, it becomes easier to forgive others. When hard times come, Satan uses our pain to steal our joy. And you know what I've discovered? The only one who can stop that is you. Whenever Satan comes at you that way and he's continually bringing that person back up in your mind, you've got to get to the point that you just say, devil, I'm not going to let you do it. I'm just going to stop it. I'm not going to let you steal my joy anymore. When we faithfully seek joy in difficult circumstances, the beautiful thing is God provides it. 
But it takes a proper focus. And that focus has got to be turned away from the pain and toward the Savior. When we understand these things, we can finally embrace the words that we started with today there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. He says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I need to be thankful for what I learned as I went through the situation with my dad with Alzheimer's. And you say, well, why should you be? Think about this. Now when someone has a family member that's going through a struggle with Alzheimer's, just like we heard about in our Sunday school class this morning, I can honestly say to them, I understand what you're going through. I've been through it. And what God does is he makes us a helper by using the things we've been through to strengthen us and give us joy in spite of the challenges. And when we finally get that joy, we can turn things over to God and we can say, God, thanks for making something beautiful out of something that was horrendous as I went through it. This morning I've had some people hand out leaves. Whether it be something that was difficult for you, or whether it was something for joyous, that was joyous for you, I'd like you to write it on your leaf. Now, before you write anything on that leaf, don't write anything you're going to be embarrassed by. Uh, if the men will uh, get ready to gather those up, and if you'll take your pencils and begin to write on those leaves something that you're thankful for, whether it be something that's happened that you learned from and has made you a better person, or whether it be something that you're just so thankful God brought into your life because it made your life better, whatever it is, I'd like you to write on that leaf something that you're thankful for. And then once you're done, your family, you take that pencil with you and give it to someone and invite them to church. Say, hey, the service times are on here. We'd like you to come join us. So take some time, write that. And Kim's going to sing some songs while the men pick up those leaves and bring them to Amy and I. This one says, thankful for my parents. I'm thankful for my parents. I'm thankful that God walked with me through my cancer. I walked in the valley of the shadow of death. And I was not afraid. I am thankful for life. I am thankful that I live in the United States of America. I'm thankful for my health, that I'm able to work and to enjoy life. I am thankful for my family. I am thankful for my wife and my children. I am thankful for God's grace. I am thankful that God provided salvation for my wife, my family, and my church family. I am thankful, God, for my family, my church family, and my country. I am thankful for God's loving grace. I am thankful for my family, for my kids, my grandkids, and my church. I am thankful for God's love, for family, and for friends. I am thankful for 
for my children and a chance to be a mom. I am thankful for my church and for my family. I am thankful for God's love and for God's provision. I am thankful for my family's love. I'm thankful for God and for family. I'm thankful for all that I have and for all that God has blessed me with. I am thankful for Jesus. I am thankful for faith. I am thankful for my church. I am thankful for my friends. Oh, this is cool. I'm thankful for Jesus Christ and my new healthy great-grandchild. I am thankful for my family and for having a good church family. I am thankful for God every day and I'm thankful for life and this church. I am thankful for my family. I am thankful for good health. I am thankful for my family. I'm thankful for our Heavenly Father. I'm thankful for music. It helps me escape the world's chaos. I'm thankful for, for my wife, my partner, the love of my life. I am thankful that I can influence many people that I see while working in the retail industry. I am thankful for Michelle's joy in finding her family and for my job. I am thankful for God's love. Turn it into a nice tree, isn't it? I am thankful for a marriage of 50 years through tears and laughter. That's a long time out there. Like 37. I have a ways to go. I'm thankful that I have some money. I'm thankful for family and for friends. I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful that I have freedom to worship. I am thankful for my family, for my friends, and for my Lord. I am thankful for my family and for God's grace. I am thankful for Christian loving, supportive parents. I am thankful for my wife and for my family. I am thankful for family.
I am thankful for good health and for this church. I am thankful for God. I am thankful for family. And I am thankful for this church. I am thankful for family. I am thankful that God has provided me with wonderful memories. Our Thanksgiving tree. So much that we have to be thankful for. You know, as we prepare to depart this morning, let's remember that it's Thanksgiving week. Let's remember that both the bad things and the good things can be used by God to bless us. It's His strength that gives us hope. I'm glad that His grace flows down from the cross and covers me. I'm glad that He rose victorious so that I can know that I one day can rise. I am so glad that I'm a part of His kingdom. If you're ready to be covered by the grace of God, maybe you haven't turned your life over to Him. Doing so gives you so much to be thankful for. Wouldn't that be a wonderful way to celebrate Thanksgiving? We ask you to come and allow His grace to flow down and cover you. As we stand and sing our invitation hymn this morning, grace flows down. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors.